Hi, my name is Chris Lee, and I am from Bevel, Ontario, Canada. And I'm here to teach you how to use my favorite Desmos feature. So when I saw this question on the Desmos Fellowship application, I thought, that's a really interesting question. But then I thought, how am I going to pick just one feature? I love them all. But then I thought for a second, nah, 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 it's going to be easy. It's the sliders. So here's a Desmos activity I made up called Freddy the Frog. And what it is, is allow students to work with sliders to see what happens when the frog goes around on the wheel and goes up and down underneath the water. The slider really gives a dynamic explanation of how this graph and why it looks that way. And then I've got other sliders in the activity where we can change the radius of the wheel. How does that affect the graph? Look at how much higher it's going up, but the zeros are still the same. The equation changes too, really interesting. Maybe I can speed it up. So this slider changes the speed of it and that drastically it changes the graph. Really interesting. I can even move the wheel up and down and look, the equation changes. There's a minus 1.5 and then up here is a plus. Well, yeah, that must have something to do with above and beyond or below the water. These sliders are great. That's what I'm gonna talk about. But then I remember the activity where I asked students to input a number to find a quadratic passing through these points. And they would go in and put a number like five and get immediate feedback. Yes, it's the immediate feedback that's great. So now they could go, okay, maybe it's 0.1. Oh, no, it's somewhere in between, it's 0.4. Notice how this question doesn't tell the students whether they're right or wrong. The immediate feedback encourages the students to think and then decide what they want to do and adjust accordingly. That, that's the cool part. And then what do the kids do, of course? They go and do stuff like this, negative 99. Why? Because they want to go off and play and to learn and see what's going on. And this activity creates an opportunity for students to be right or wrong in a, a lot of different and interesting ways. That's what I love about Desmos. Oh, wait. But then I remember this activity where the kids, I challenged them to try and draw a perpendicular line. And it's difficult. And I said, oh, well, what do you need? Ask them, what might you what help you feel more confident that you actually have perpendicular lines? So what did I do? I created a need. And that need then, just like Dan says, create a little bit of a headache, give them a little bit of medicine. So they might ask for a grid or a protractor, but I give them numbers. And then they're going to have to go off and try and explore and say, hmm, there must be a connection going on here. And then I could ask them to think about what they like better. Why? Explain why you like maybe the numbers better. Let's think about it. Let's talk. But then I see this one. I remember this activity I made up. The SAMR model allows, uh, is a way to grade how technology impacts the classroom. The highest grades goes to those technology and those uh, activities that allows the teacher to teach in a way that was previously inconceivable. This is an example of that. I'm gonna push play. What? I'm listening to a quadratic. It sounds like it goes up and then down. I must be talking about this one. I never imagined I could talk about quadratics with sound. Desmos has given me that opportunity. That's the thing I love. But then I said, what about the turtles? Everyone loves the turtles. We love watching them run around. So this has got to be my favorite feature. But then what do the kids do when we do this? Of course, the kids do all this. And I used to get up, upset and mad about that. And I said, well, no, wait, this is a learning opportunity. Talk to me. Why we got all the scribbling? What's going on? Oh, my God, I've got 20 different turtles on the screen. How come? Talk about being wrong in a really interesting way. This activity allows me to do this. This has got to be what I love. But and it allows us to play around, be creative. But if you're going to be creative, maybe I'll encourage you to do this. Want to learn about new functions so you could draw a picture like that? Wow, this creativity and flexibility is what I love about Desmos. Well, I thought this is way too much. There's too many things that I like. How am I going to decide? Well, then I thought, I'm just going to tell them a story. I'm going to tell you a story about Rain. Rain is a student who I taught a couple of years ago who has autism. He loved computers. He loved math, but he hate, hated writing stuff down. In fact, he told me that the sound of the pencil hitting the paper or the pen hitting the paper drove him bonkers. And so he refused to write anything down. And I wanted to teach him about sketching and drawing lines and functions and all that sort of stuff. How am I going to get him to do that? I thought Desmos can come to the answer. 
So I went online looking for a type of activity where the kids had to sketch and there aren't really a lot of them. And the problem is it's because it's so hard to sketch using a mouse or a mouse pad. And so I realized though, that the kids don't have to sketch the whole thing. They could just give me the five critical points and Rain was all over this. He could tell me the period and the amplitude of all sorts of functions. So, and then I added this thing, say, okay, you think that sketch is good? Let's check it, see how you did. If you need to make any adjustments, you could. And this was a great learning tool, not just for Rain, but for my entire class. They could go off and try all sorts of sketches, being able to go and check their answers right away. And this was great. And then what happened in October, this class gallery came out and now we can use this. And I, so I added this to the activity and I had kids decide they're going to make their own function so they can start working together and sharing other ones and talking. But of course, you're not just going to make up a function. You're going to ask the kids that they're going to have to try it out and make sure that it's a suitable function for their classmates and check to see, yeah, I think our kids can do that before submitting their answer. And then I thought, well, okay, we want to have a nice little cool down at the end of this activity maybe a little assessment, maybe a little check-in. But of course, if we do a check-in and they've got the ability to see the graph, what are they gonna do? Well, in this case, what I did was I take, took out that feature and decided I'm just gonna remove it so that they're just gonna submit this and maybe give them one or two that I've asked them to go off and submit. But then what I'm gonna do is hide the answers. So a teacher is going to come along afterwards and unhide these. And what I did was I took the uh, student work and then compare it to the answer. And so you see here, we've got a student work and the answer, and I can quickly check and see if they make, made, made a mistake or not. And then I can give them that quick feedback, another cool feature of Desmos. So I really thought this would be a cool activity to show you because I thought it was something different, but still, talks about all the cool features. But this wasn't the question that was asked. The question is, I was supposed to teach you how to use my favorite Desmos activity. And out of all these cool things that I've demonstrated, frankly, the thing that I love the most is how easy it is for teachers to edit and manipulate and personalize all these Desmos activities for themselves. And so that's what I'm going to show you in less than two minutes. So if you wanted to make your own activity, all you need to do is come up here, take the activity that you like, go over here and copy and edit. And now in seconds, you have your own activity that you can edit to personalize for yourself. Maybe you're going along and saying, my kids aren't quite ready for amplitude and phase shift or uh, vertical translations and phase shift. So I'm going to delete those. How do I delete them? Go up, push the X and delete the screen. And now I have ones with just amplitude. But that's only three questions and only one of them has amplitude. How would I add questions in? No problem. Come over here, go up to duplicate the screen, change of course, this is question four, and change your question. Maybe I want this to be one half X or sine X. Of course, remember this is gonna graph. So we're gonna move into the graph and change this graph to one half X. And boom, I've got a brand new question. Here, now I can go off and make as many as I want. When I'm ready, I could just go off and push publish. And guess what? I now have an activity that is personalized for my students and I feel really good about assigning it. And if I can get teachers excited and about this, then we've got to win. I teach, I've done run all sorts of workshops and often I'm talking about the CL and the creative things and building and all that sort of stuff. But frankly, my favorite workshops are for the teachers who are new or a little hesitant. They might have heard about Desmos. They know a teacher down the road is doing them, but um, they don't have enough confidence to go off and do their own. Or they've seen them and it's just too much for what they want to do or not enough. I can come in in two minutes, show them how to quickly create their own activity and they get excited and, and motivated. And if they're excited and motivated, they're going to use it in their classroom. And if more teachers are using Desmos, that means more students are using Desmos and falling in love with mathematics. And that is the, my favorite feature of Desmos. So thanks so much for your time and have a great day.